So we're going to look at these special right triangles. There's two of them. Uh, and really, you just kind of need to memorize them. I'm going to teach you a couple different ways. So first, we have 45, 45, 90. And then the other triangle is a 30, 60, 90. Those numbers refer to the three angles of the triangle. So they both have to have a 90 degree angle because everything we're learning about with trigonometry has to have a 90 degree angle. Here the two angles are 45. They're each 45. Now, way back uh, quite a few lessons ago, we learned about isosceles triangles. And we had a theorem about the base angles. The isosceles triangle theorem says that if two angles are the same, then those two sides that are across from it will be the same. So since these are both 45, the two sides that are across from those angles, opposite those two angles, are going to be the same number. No matter what number they are, they have to be the same thing. So if you know one, you know the other. And whatever number those two sides have, whatever value, the hypotenuse is just going to be times the square root of 2. Now, you could figure that out if, if you had a number here like 4 and 4. You didn't know what this side was. You would just do Pythagorean theorem. 4 squared plus 4 squared equals x squared. So that is 16 plus 16. When you solve that out, you would get, uh, add it, you get 32. And then when you square root it, that's 16 times 2, 4 and 4. So that's perfect square right there. We're taking out the 4. The 2 stays inside the square root, and you get 4 square root of 2. Same number, just with a square root of 2. That always happens. So it's worth just kind of memorizing. So 45, 45, 90, the two legs, the two sides of the, of the right triangle are equal. The hypotenuse is just times the square root of 2. The 30, 60, 90 triangles... It's got a kind of a similar ratio. So the 30 degree angle is going to have some number across from it, like we'll say 5. Then the hypotenuse is always going to be twice that number, 2 times that number. So 2 times 5, this would be 10. And then the longer side, the longer leg, the leg across from the 60 degree angle. Is going to be whatever the, um, number we had for the short side, just times the square root of 3. You could check that out with the Pythagorean theorem and make sure everything works out. It does. Um, if you only knew the 5 and the 10, you'd be able to solve. You would get 5 squared of 3. It works out. So these are so common that it's worth memorizing. I'm going to show you a couple ways to memorize it. So, one thing about these is you can always think of these as sines and cosines. So, if we're doing the 45 degrees, sine would be opposite over hypotenuse. So, that would be x over x times square root of 2. Now, there's a lot of algebra in here. The x's cancel out. You're not supposed to leave a square root in the denominator, so you're supposed to rationalize the denominator. We don't need to get into all of this too much. And then square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2 in the denominator, and there's just a regular square root of 2 in the numerator. So we did that for sine, but it would also work for cosine, because then you just take adjacent over hypotenuse to be the same thing. So for the 45 degrees, you can see when we simplified this, it was going to be square root of 2 over 2. Sine of 45 degrees and cosine of 45 degrees are both square root of 2 over 2. You can do a similar idea here with 
the 30, 60, 90. If you took opposite over hypotenuse for that, you would have sine of 30 equals x over 2x. And then your x's cancel out, so it'll be 1 over 2. Sine of 30 is 1 half. Sine 30 degrees is 1 half. And then um, 60 degrees really works out to be kind of the same thing. Just remember that 30 and 60 degrees are complementary, so that means the sine of 30 is the same thing as cosine of 60. Complementary angles, cosine and sine, are going to be equal. Same thing here with the um, cosine of 30. You get square root of 3 over 2 and square root of 3 over 2 for sine of 60 because they're complementary. And then the 45, 45, they're both the same because 45 is complementary with itself. So you can actually learn all of this or remember all of this using your left hand. It's often referred to as the left hand trick. Um, Sometimes it says for memorizing the unit circle, but it's really for memorizing sine of 30, sine 45, sine 60. So what there's a lot of videos available that you can watch about how to do it. But the gist is this angle is your 30 degree angle. The middle angle is your 45 degree angle. And that finger right there is your 60 degree angle. And you just fold down whichever finger um, matches up with the angle that you're trying to figure out. So if you want to know sine and cosine for the 30-degree angle, you fold down the 30-degree angle, which is your ring finger. So you fold that finger down. And you notice you have three fingers on one side of your folded down finger and then only one on the other. So the only thing you have to remember from there is that it's the square root of how many fingers you see over two. That's why there's an over two in the palm right there. So there's three fingers, so there's square root of three over two. Square root of three over two, 30 degrees, square root of three over two. On the other side of it, if you use the other finger that's by itself, still the 30 degree angle. So it's square root of 1, which is just 1. Square root of 1 is 1. Over 2. 1 over 2. So you fold it down the 30 degree angle. So when you do this, it's always cosine first and then sine. Cosine is always the one that's going to involve your thumb. Sine will always involve your pinky. Cosine's first, sine is second. Cosine's your thumb, sine is your pinky. If you're doing a different angle, like the 45 degree angle, you would fold that finger down. And then you have two fingers on the left for cosine, two fingers on the right for sine. So that's, remember, square root of fingers over 2. So square root of 2 over 2 is cosine. Sine, square root of 2 fingers over 2. Square root of 2 over 2. They're both the same thing. If you switched it around, um, if we went with a 60-degree angle now instead, you would fold down your uh, pointer finger. There's one finger on the left, so that's Square root of 1 over 2, that's cosine. Square root of 1 over 2. Cosine, 60 degrees is the finger we fold it down. 1 over 2. And then for sine, there's three fingers over there for sine, so that's square root of 3 over 2. 
six in a green slot with Volga. So as we're working all of these problems, there's nothing wrong with thinking of them um, this way with this triangle relationship. I just think this is harder to remember. Um, I'd rather just do the sine and cosine stuff. But you can either just remember that these two sides are the same, and that's times the square root of 2. There's nothing wrong with that. Or that the short side, to get to the hypotenuse, you double it. And then to get to the longer side, you multiply by square root of 3. That one's kind of hard. You could also think of every single one of these just as a sine or cosine question, or maybe even tangent. So take a look at this problem. Um, it's a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So you do know that these two sides should be the same because the two angles are the same. But to figure out what they are, You can either write a sine or a cosine equation to solve it out. So if we pick this angle up here, if we go with angle A, you can say sine of that angle, 45 degrees, equals opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite is this side. We'll call it x. Over the hypotenuse is 10. So sine of 45, I would use the left-hand trick, fold down the middle finger for 45 degrees. Sine is the side with your pinky. So that's square root of 2 over 2. So just replace sine 45 with square root of 2 over 2. Now cross-multiply that proportion. So it's... 10 times square root of 2, 2 times x, divide by 2. When you divide, and there's square roots in here, the square root pretty much stays protected. It's got that little shield around it, the square root symbol, the radical symbol. It's protected. You don't have to touch it. You just divide whole numbers out in front. So 10 over 2 is 5, square root of 2. Now, for a couple of reasons, you should know that these two sides are going to be the same. You know it because the angles are the same, which means it's isosceles, so they have to be the same. Or you know it because these two angles are complements of each other, so sine and cosine are equal. Therefore, the adjacent side is going to be the same thing, because it would be adjacent over hypotenuse. We set up the exact same equation to solve it out. So the two sides are both 5 squared of 2. Down here, um, we've got right triangle DEF, 30 degrees, 60 degrees. So we know the sine and cosine relationships. So here's our 30 degree angle. This is opposite. That's the hypotenuse. We can set that up with a sine equation. Sine 30 degrees equals opposite over hypotenuse. We'll call it x. Then you can use the left hand trick for sine 30 degrees. 30 degrees would be your ring finger. Fold it down. Sine is the pinky side. There's only one finger on that side. So that's 1 over 2. Square root of the fingers over 2. Then you cross-multiply this and solve it out. x times 1 is x. 
2 times 5 squared of 3. 2 times 5 is 10. But square root of 3 kind of just tags along. So we just found the hypotenuse, 10 square root of 3. Now that you know two sides, you could either do Pythagorean theorem or you could just set it up and do cosine or sine of 60. Either way, you could do cosine of 30 or sine of 60, we get the same answer. So let's go with, just go with cosine 30. Then we get the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. From cosine 30 degrees. If you want, you can call that x now. x over the hypotenuse is 10 squared of 3. Then using the left-hand trick, cosine 30, so you fold down your ring finger for 30 degrees. Cosine is the side with your thumb. There's three fingers there, so square root of 3. Always over 2. So then you multiply this, 2 times x, and 10 square root of 3 times square root of 3. When you're multiplying two square roots together, you multiply the inside numbers together. So square root of 3, square root of 3, that's square root of 9, because you multiply 3 times 3. And the square root of 9 is 3. So that's 10 times 3, which is 30. And to solve for x, you divide by 2 and you get 15. So this side is 15. And now you've got all the side lines. We've got a 30 degree angle here. This is the opposite side. So that's sine. We have an opposite and hypotenuse. We're doing sine of 30 equals opposite. You can call it x. You could even just call it O if you want. Over 4 square root of 3. Sine 30, 30 degrees is your ring finger, fold it down. Sine is your pinky side, so that's 1 over 2. Then you cross multiply and solve. So that's 1 times 4 square root of 3, 2 times x. Divide by 2 to solve it. You get 2 square root of 3. Then to find the other side, you can do, you can either change the angle or keep the angle, it doesn't matter. Let's do cosine 30. So we get the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. Cosine 30, 30 degrees again, that's your ring finger, fold it down. Cosine to the thumb side, square root of 3 over 2. Cross multiply, so 2x, 4, square root of 3, square root of 3, it's just 4 times 3.
divide by 2 and you get x equals, let's see that was 12, divided by 2 is 6. So the adjacent side over here is 6. The easy thing about 45, 45, 90s, the easiest thing is that it's isosceles, which means these two sides are going to be the same. I wouldn't waste time doing much of anything with it. So then to find the hypotenuse, you just have to do sine or cosine, it doesn't matter which. So let's take this side will be sine equals the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Sine 45, so 45 degrees, that's your middle finger, fold it down. Sine is the pinky side, so that's square the 2 over 2. And you can cross multiply and solve. So that's h times squared 2 equals 2 times 2 is 4. And to solve for h, you divide by the square root of 2. Since the um, the numbers are both inside the square root, top and bottom. That's, those are the numbers that we're going to work with. You can divide those numbers. 6 divided by 2 is 3. And it just stays inside a square root. So the hypotenuse is 4 square root of 3. So for this next one, number nine, we do know these two sides are going to be the same. So once we find one, we can save time and off to find the other one. So if we take this angle here, we can do sine. That'll be opposite over hypotenuse. You don't want to call it O, you can call it X. Sine 45, 45 degrees, this is your middle finger, so you fold that down. Sine is the pinky side, so that's square root of 2 over 2. Then cross multiply. 10 times square root of 2, 2 times x. And divide by 2. So we get 5 squared to 2. Like we mentioned when we started the problem, the two sides are going to be the same because the angles are the same. So that's also 5 squared root of 2. Number 10. So this last question here, it's a little more complicated because we have two triangles side by side and there's a lot of variables to solve for. So when you go through this first, you start with the only number we have, which is 10, the only side length we have. And we're going to find A and B because those are the other two sides of that triangle. So we're not even going to worry about this triangle yet. So to find A, that's opposite over the hypotenuse. Opposite and hypotenuse is sine. We have sine of 30 equals the opposite side, which is letter A, variable A. 
over the hypotenuse, which is 10. And you know that sine of 30 degrees, 30 degrees is your ring finger, sine is the pinky side. So that's 1 over 2. Cross multiply. 10 equals 2a. So a equals 5. You can get B by either using Pythagorean theorem or um, another sine cosine equation. So if we have 30 degrees here, B would be adjacent. So that's cosine. Cosine and hypotenuse. Adjacent hypotenuse. Adjacent is B, hypotenuse is 10. Again, 30 degrees is your ring finger, so you fold that down. Cosine to the thumb side. There's three fingers on the left, so 3 over 2. Square root of 3 over 2 equals B over 10. Cross multiply, 2B equals 10 times square root of 3. And then divide by 2, you get b equals 5 square root of 3. Then we've got the easiest side of the whole thing, c. 45, 45, 90 triangle. So the two sides are the same. So B is 5 square root of 3, C is 5 square root of 3. It's isosceles because the two angles are the same. And then we can solve for side D by doing sine or cosine, it doesn't matter which one. We'll take this angle right here, the 45 degrees. We'll go opposite over hypotenuse. The so sine 45 degrees equals opposite over hypotenuse. Forty-five degrees, that's your middle finger. Fold it down. Sine is pinky side. So that's two over two. Square root of two over two. And then cross multiply. Two times five is ten. So to solve for D here, we have to divide by square root of 2. This is a little bit, kind of the hardest one we've had to solve yet. Here's why. Not supposed to have a square root of 2 on the denominator. Mentioned it once earlier to get rid of that. If you don't want it in the denominator, which you're not allowed, you do square root of 2 and square root of 2. What that does is square root of 2 times square root of 2 just makes square root of 4, which is 2. It makes a whole 2. You can divide your numbers. 10 divided by 2 is 5. And then square root of 3 times square root of 2, you multiply those numbers, 3 times 2, to get square root of 6. Now is our last side. D is 5, square root of 6.